Well, I made the comment uh, a few days ago that we needed to do some more uh, Van de Graaff Generator. And our alpha feature Mike obliged, and uh, we're going to an album I haven't even heard of, so it's going to be good, probably. Hi, guys. Welcome to Lee Reacts. Hope everyone's having a good day. Bam, bam, bam. I know I am. <laughs> and we are back with Van de Graaff Generator, and we're going to be listening to um, The Emperor and His War Room. Both movements. Um... It's the last track on side one. It is eight minutes and 15 seconds long. And it's uh, part A is The Emperor and part B is The Room. Um, this is the album that followed uh, The Least We Can Do Is Wave To Each Other, which we've done many tracks from. Um, the first track apparently is a really big one too, which is uh, written by everybody. It's called Killa. And um, there's a bunch of different ones on this that look good. So we're at the check out the other ones. Um, so it's... Oh, Mr. Fripp makes an appearance on this. Well, I'm glad that I saw that beforehand. So I guess this is going to be great. Oh, come on, Sun Tzu. Get your shit together, bro. There you go. All right. Thank you again to our alpha patron, Mike C, as always. He's always bringing the prog heat. The Canterbury... Oh, the Canterbury crush. <laughs> That's good. All right. Um, even though I know that this is not that. But I love Vanagraf Chain Raider. One of my favorite bands we found on here, 100%. That's the playlist for the other stuff if you want to go watch it. All right. Emperor in his war room. Bandograph generator. Three, two, one, go. It's 
God. Complaining tongues are still A thousand mouths are filled with rusted metal We had David Jackson on the flu. Your face a shade of green It's like there are music that kind of just exists outside of time. I don't know how to describe it because that just sounds like an, a, the music they make is like this eternal other like Elseworld, you know, because it's just so foreign and so strange. 
but it's so damn good. I can't get enough of it, bro. Um, at some points, like I, I say this sometimes as like a, I guess like a euphemism or what, but it, it it's, it's true. It sounds like something you shouldn't be listening to, you know, like I just get that feeling sometimes from their music. It's like, am I really like, <laughs> am I listening to this? Is this is not, uh, they always feel like they're tapping into something else, you know? And uh, I don't know if that's just to Peter's credit that he's that artistic and that creative that he can just make you um, kind of fall into this dark pit of I don't even I don't even know what to call it, man. Um, but after listening to, you know, uh, Pawn Hearts, um, God Bluff, I've listened to some of it. I think I've listened to most of it, you know, like that they're, they're, they get so strange and so dark. But it's like I say, it's like a healthy release of the darkness, because if you don't have that, then it just festers and it kind of starts infiltrating your whole life and not just your shadow self or whatever you want to call it, you know, Um, because I think that's the first thing you have to admit, like, if you really want to get anywhere, you know, with yourself is there, I have a bad side and I have a good side. Or if you want to look at it like it's a dark and light, even though, you know, dark doesn't mean bad and light doesn't mean good, you know, there's many different ways to look at it but i feel like uh they really encapsulate that feeling of darkness but in a a good expressive way to just kind of let it out and acknowledge it you know you have to acknowledge the beast so it doesn't get mad you know because eventually if you don't um he starts barking that's not a good sign so yeah we all have our darkness we all have our our light as well but like i said sometimes darkness is a good thing and sometimes light isn't a good thing you know, it, it, it's just how you look at things. Everyone's perspective is different. It's all subjective, but objective, you know, morals and all that stuff. That's a whole another ball of wax. But I'd say that they are so adept at just, you know, having that cathartic release and uh, just kind of staring into the abyss without it staring back into you. Basically, it's what it boils down to. And uh, I appreciate Peter and his company for that because it's um. In, it's invaluable to be honest um so peter hamill lead vocals and acoustic guitar david jackson alto tenor and baritone saxophone and flute q banton on uh the hammond and farfisa organ piano oscillator vocals nick potter on bass and guy evans on the drums and percussion and then also robert fripp uh, played electric guitar on this so I thought that acoustic was also for it, but I guess now that was actually Peter because um, I heard that that really slight acoustic kind of riff underneath of the main line in the first part, which was the emperor and then the room when everything starts going a little crazy because every band of graph generator song hits that point where they just turn the, they flip the switch, you know, because it feels like for half the song, they're kind of building it up, setting it up, doing little tangents here or there. But then that switch flips. And then it's just insanity, you know, it's utter chaos at points, but it never, it's never sounded better. You know, um, I guess we have a new album to do now, <laughs> uh, cause we've worked through, like I said, a couple of them. Um, but I, uh, yeah, I love these guys. I love Peter. He, I, if I had to associate like the writing of a uh, artist that we've covered on here with like my actual, uh, well, not this one as much because it's about a tyrannical king that, you know, murders people. That, that's not so much me, but a lot of his um, externalizing the internal of what we struggle with. I think he does a really good job of that. And I connect with that so much um, out of all the lyricists that we've featured on this channel. Um, there's just something so uh, connective and um, it almost reaches this deeper level for me when I listen to his music um, because it's this is like. This is top of the shelf kind of stuff right here. If you're into it, at least, you know, not everybody's going to be into it. And I understand that. But if you're into this type of music like this is um, this isn't obviously I don't think this is their best song, I, you know, but this is like the, their whole entire catalog. I feel like that I've heard at least is the top shelf stuff when it comes to prog. It's almost like your favorite band, favorite brand, uh, favorite brand. <laughs> That's true, too, though. Uh, favorite band, favorite band. You know, I, I feel like Vandergraaf Generator would be a lot of my favorite bands, favorite bands from you know, if I had to ask them, obviously, because um, they had such a huge influence, I feel like, on the prog music that came after it. But like I said in the beginning of the recap, they kind of exist outside of time as well, you know, because you can't if I didn't know this was from 1970 or 1969 or whatever, like 
other than the quality giving it away because no matter what, even their damn pop songs back then were good, bro. Like, God damn, it's not fair. It's not fair in the slightest. That's okay. <laughs> um, but like, you know, it, it's just so good and it's got so much value that um, I really appreciate it. And I'd say that my favorite part of this would definitely be Guy on the drums and Peter's vocals. Um, this fantastic work. Uh, he played the part of a tyrannical king very well, you know, kind of, um, I don't know. It, it said that he killed a bunch of people, but he was haunted by the ghosts, you know? So like I said, it's a very good encapsulation of yin and yang, good and evil, uh, because obviously he did terrible atrocities, but he's also haunted by them, you know, at the same time. So it's not like he's pure evil, um, you know, because even I think the most purest form of darkness, if you could ever get it, it still has got, it still has, still has got, it still has um, 0.1% of, you know, something good. Because I don't think anything can be fully good or anything can be fully bad. I think uh, it's more of a balance sort of thing. Um but there can definitely be things that are absolutely horrendous and evil, though. But, you know, I don't know. There have been, actually, I'll take that one back. There has been some things that there's no redeeming. Never mind. That's a bad metaphor. Um, forget about that one. But at the same time, like I said, you know, uh, we always uh, think in this binary kind of thinking one, two, you know, you kind of got to think outside the box and think about zero, you know, which isn't even an actual number. It's a concept, basically, nil, you know, Um which I think was actually started by Indian. It was an Indian person. Was it a mathematician or something? I, or was it a religious thing? I can't remember. But like the number zero, it, you know, it wasn't even really a thing. Um, but it's obviously a concept. And um, I don't know how we got to mathematical properties and such. But, um, you know, that's why, that's why y'all come here, right? <laughs> um Definitely, I love the flute and the sax in this too. David Jackson's always the unsung hero with their music sometimes. Um, Nick Potter on the bass did a fantastic job as well. But I, you know, definitely Fripp on the guitar, Peter Hamill's vocals and acoustic guitar, and uh, the organ. I, I mean, it's so good, man. It's got such a great sound. Vanagraph and The Doors. And it's funny, those are like my favorite bands. There must be some of me in organs, man, because I love it. And my favorite bands in this channel are usually bands that really feature an organ heavy. And they do that very well. So I think that's it, though. How long have we been talking? Eh, not too long. That's not too bad. Um, I definitely want to do more from this album. So I think Killer was the big uh, the big song from this album. Um, but if you have another track from this one or any of the ones I've missed, let me know down below what you think. And if you have uh, never heard that song before, that was your first time hearing it, let me know what you thought because I want to know because I definitely felt, um, as usual, very connected to their music, even though they're, you know, speaking of bloodthirsty tyrants. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Bye. One more thing. We have an awesome Patreon community. We'd love to have you. If you join the $15 tier or up, you get one free request a month. Uh, join any of the tiers, get access to all of our block videos, full album reactions. We got a few Beatles albums on there, some other albums, uh, Blind Faith and such. Uh, there's a lot of block stuff, more than you'd think. So if you just keep scrolling, there's all kinds of videos on there. Um, there's also a PayPal as well in the description if you want to send a tip or request in that way. Thanks for watching, y'all. I'm out.